you know, a lot of people have been hurt financially from the sell-offs in, in a GameStop, off the highs, sell-offs in Bitcoin, you name it. How could they come back financially and even emotionally from, from suffering those type of losses? Gary, Gary, Gary V showed me. I mean, there's, it all comes down to the individual situation. What you hope, Brian, unfortunately, I've heard many stories of the opposite is that some people took out loans to buy GameStop because they got excited in the moment. And so, you know, I think the Bitcoin sell-offs are, are, are minor. I mean, where Bitcoin is right now in comparison, you're talking about normality. I think the GameStop situation was so unique in so many different ways. And how they come back financially and emotionally is gonna come down to who they are as a human being. I think the same person that is undereducated and just rides a wave on emotion and hype may be in a vulnerable spot to deal with the downside of that. Others took calculated risks. You know, my hope is that they see the big picture and don't value money enough and are able to move on because they're happy as a human, not worried about an extra dollar in their bank account. Gary, is there a playbook that they can follow, like three steps to, to help improve their outcomes? Step one, know what you're doing with your money. There's a lot of places where I've been offered incredible opportunities, it seemed on paper, but I just genuinely didn't fully understand it. You have a ton of people right now putting money into the public market, putting money into cryptos, um, putting money into startups, and, and, and really they're chasing. They're chasing the momentum of the conversation that the media outlets are talking about, that social media is talking about, that forums are talking about, communities are talking about. Number one, two, and three is be educated. Know what you're doing with your money. There's incredible opportunity in front of us. I mean, wait, you, you, this program is gonna be talking about NFTs at an insanely high level. The problem is 96% of NFT projects are gonna be financial losers. So get educated and then attack. You know, Gary, I wanna ask you, it feels to me like everyone now wants to talk stocks. Does it seem that way to you? And, and what do you think's behind that energy? I think entrepreneurship had a 10 year incredible run and we just saw a ton around entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship. So then you had the Robin Hood effect where you just had an enormous amount of very young human beings jumping into the dynamics. You know, you go to high school today and more boys and girls want to be entrepreneurs or influencers that monetize off brand deals or start their own products than anything else in the world. Not rap stars, not athletes. So capitalism in a 3.0 world of this new individuality capability because of devices like this have created a really interesting variable. So you're right, a lot of people have gotten into the market, but that same energy is also in drop shipping, starting a Shopify store, buying crypto, NFT, investing. Entrepreneurship, thus investing, has taken over an entire generation. Yeah, it feels like uh, business is the, the new sports or whatever, however you want to frame 100%, that kind of thing. Because cause the cost of entry is so low. And the problem is yeah. too many people don't ha aren't self-aware and don't realize they're not entrepreneurs or investors. And unfortunately, they're going to have to learn that lesson because the market is unemotional and it's going to do what it wants to do, whether you're a billionaire who's upset about Reddit or whether you're a kid that gets caught in an exciting moment but then gets slammed. The market is the market is the market. It has no emotions. It is not picking sides and people will win and lose on the truth of the end consumer's actions. All right, so let's, um, speaking of sports, let's talk about NFTs. Tell me what I need to know about Top Shot, which is what is going on there because I'm only 30, but I feel like a boomer when I, when I look at some of this stuff. You know what's so funny? Uh, a lot of people are trying to connect their Coinbase to their MetaMask right now, and they're like scared, and I keep making fun of them because I'm like, you made fun of your parents for not wanting to put a credit card into a website nine years ago, and now you're the boomer. Uh, there's a lot going on in NFTs. You know, the digitalization of everything in our society, social currency, the reason people care about a blue check on Instagram is the same reason this is gonna be huge. IP is gonna see an incredible amount of dollars. Artists, both digital artists and music artists are gonna find a platform that is going to allow them to monetize without people sitting in the middle taking a piece of the cut. This is going to be an incredibly big revolution. And you know, NBA Top Shot is an incredibly big platform because uh, NBA IP is so hot, sports cards have been so hot, NFT is getting hot. So that was a perfect storm. Big shout out to those individuals. You've got So Rare. I wrote a tiny $25,000 check into, but I've bought more in the actual soccer 
cards on there. I think you're gonna see a lot about so rare talk about given footballs, aka soccer's global footprint. And then you've got the overall NFT market, which is just about to, and, and I wasn't kidding. This program is gonna spend an enormous amount of time this summer, fall, and winter talking NFT.